your girl, Real Talk with Luana, and I am here live at Arizona Black Chamber Award Ceremony, and I am where the mistress ceremony of herself. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. You did a great job. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about your background and who you are, especially in the journalism field. Well, I came up as a journalist in television news. I uh, worked local markets, then went to CNN, then did BET's nightly newscast, and then kind of trash and transitioned into entertainment and radio, and now I do an entertainment television show in New York. Um, and I do a couple of radio shows, and I have my own website, uh, singleandlivingfab.com, for single women. Awesome! So, talk about the transition from going from news, like hard news, into entertainment, and was there any difficulties that came with that? No, actually, I think it's a better fit for me. And it's not really just entertainment as much as it is being more of a personality and just relating more to the news that you're sharing. So instead of being objective um, about a story like Ferguson, for example, you can really talk about how you feel and how you can relate to what's going on, what you think is right and what you think is wrong in more detail than you could as a journalist where you just really want to remain objective. Awesome. Uh, now, can you expand on some of maybe the disadvantages or some things you had to go through as far as being a black journalist when it comes down to the look and it comes down to you know grammar and just pronouncing things grammar's never been an is issue you know I've learned English as a child and that's what we speak in journalism here in the US so that was never an issue um, as far as my look I never really had any issues um, dealing with that in this business deal with any struggles at all? Oh, absolutely. There were struggles, just not with grammar or, you know, or, or with my look. I think just um, people understanding what it's like being an African American and covering various stories, making sure like in a newsroom meeting when we're talking about different things that are going on in the community, making sure that they understand what should be covered in the African-American community and the ways that it should be covered, not ignoring certain stories or not covering stories in a stereotypical way because they don't understand the culture. Those things happen a lot, um, particularly in the news business and in entertainment too. You know, it's just like the New York Times reporter who describes Shonda Rhimes as an angry black woman. You know, come on, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I think that's awesome just to see somebody of your statue, you know, to keep moving on because it gives hope to the younger journalists that you can keep, you know, you can keep your name, yeah. you can still look that particular way because we do know that in this industry, I know personally that they even got on me about changing my name and changing the look just yeah. to kind of fit the industry all together and to yeah. see somebody like yourself, very successful. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that you have to change who you are as long as you're willing to really push against whatever barriers come your way. I mean, it just all depends on what you want to do. That's awesome. How did you enjoy tonight? I absolutely loved it. The people here are lovely. The chamber organization could not have been nicer. And I do a lot of these events. This one particular, it was just very well organized and orchestrated. So I always appreciate that. And I think the audience did as well. Awesome. Now you have a website. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, singleandlivingfab.com is a website I started to celebrate single women and encourage single women to live their best lives. And I always say it's not anti-man, it's not anti-relationship, but if you're not in a relationship, if you've never been married, if you're recently divorced or widowed, and especially if you've never had children, I think that this website is a place for you because it just talks about how to navigate these waters when so many people can judge you for being single and pressure you for being single. It's just really learning how to kind of relax within your space and be the best you that you can be. That's awesome. Now, how do they contact you if they're interested in getting involved? Um, just go to singleandlivingfab.com and there's all kinds of information on the website. Oh, I had a great time. As always, Black Chamber, they put on a great event. Now, are you part of the Black Chamber? Oh, no, I'm not. Um, however, I love to come to all of their events. Uh, this is like maybe my eighth time, and I love it every time I come. Now, is there, um, do you guys have a company? That, are you guys entrepreneurs? My husband is, but I'm not. Okay, what does your husband do? Um, he's Kenny Harris Construction Company. Okay. Um, he's a civil engineer. Okay. So, what does the Black Chamber actually mean to uh, your husband, you and your husband's business? This is a place where we can go and find out 
about what companies and places where I can purchase products from that I know that I would like and enjoy and help give money back to the home-based community. Um, How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. Why don't you introduce yourself for the camera? My name is Marcelle Franklin and I currently serve as the board chair of the Black Chamber of Arizona. How did you feel about this event? Oh, it was a wonderful event. It is always good to have a room full of folks celebrating small black businesses. It was wonderful to have uh, Nielsen here to talk about the spend of black dollars. That you was know, amazing. Wasn't that phenomenal? Yes. And then to have Jackie Reed, formerly with BET, to be here to MC with us and then to celebrate our Corporation of the Year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, uh, to celebrate our Chairwoman's Award of the Year with Corals and Brady and Leonard Liu, as well as our small business, which was uh, Hassan Construction Company. That's awesome. Now, I used to actually come here when I was in school, when okay. I was at Walter Cronkite, okay. and I've seen a big difference with what you guys are doing now yes. compared to that. Okay. The biggest difference I would have to say, in terms of the dinner, what you see here at the dinner, we decided to change the format. We changed it up. So what you didn't see is the traditional sit down, you get a plated dinner, kind of stuffy. And so we decided to do networking because when you come to these dinners, what do you want to do? Network. That's what you want to do is network. So we created opportunities for networking, for people to mix and mingle. Then when you sit down, we have our program, and now you got mixing and mingling again. And sometimes we have to kick people out because the convention center <laughs> says we close at X time. So that's a good thing. <laughs> if somebody wants to get involved as far as a you know young you know business owner, how do they get involved with the Black Chamber? There's a couple of things that you can do. You may call the Black Chamber office, and I apologize that I do not have that number memorized. Uh, or you can go to the website, which is www www.phoenixblackchamber.com. I'm doing wonderful, thank you. So I heard that you are a awesome entrepreneur out here. Well, we have been out here since 1946. My father moved out here when he was a Tuskegee Airman to integrate Luke Air Force Base. And in doing so, he loved Arizona, he loved the weather, and so he started a funeral home basically back in 1947 and um, it's still up and running at this time. Awesome. What did you think about this event? I thought this was a wonderful event. It's always wonderful to get people together, communicate, have diversity, and to know that there's black businessmen out here in, in Phoenix and Arizona. That's awesome. Has the Black Chamber um, helped you with your success? Well, the Black Chamber has done lots of things with uh, corporations and letting people know that you know black people have small businesses out here that need support and that they've been very uh, instrumental in bringing a lot of people together and to communicate because most of the time without the lack of communication um, we aren't able to get together and know what everybody has as a product to provide to the society. You heard it first here on Real Talk with Luana.